Is that Thunder or is that you? Hmm? Okay. Is that thunder or is that you rolling? Oh, that was me rolling, not Thunder. This okay. Time. So I'd wow. like to call this meeting in order Thursday, September 19th, 2024 at 1015 a.m. If I can first establish quorum. Um, so um, let's see, Sue Minthanen. Present. John Balash. Present. Joanna Roach. Present. In person in the trailer, we've got uh, Linda Williams. Present. And myself on Zoom, Veronica Bolchik. Present. And if I can establish staff members, we have Jericho Mele in the trailer. In attendance. Thank you. Um, approval of the agenda. Can I have a motion? So move, Madam Chair. Second. Thank you. Just, just, Hold on, there's a change. Yeah, just, just to be noted, uh, Sue had uh, a time change. Oh, was that for this or was that for CHS? No, that's that's actually in minutes. It's in minutes. Okay. Sorry, yeah. sorry, brain yeah. dead. I, I got a problem with one of the minutes, so we'll get there a second. Okay. okay. And yeah. I'll see you now. Should be approved. Okay. okay. So uh, I have a second. I will do a vote. So Sue, approval of the minutes. No, the agenda. Aye. On the agenda, I'm sorry. Agenda? I on the agenda. Okay, John? Got the approved, aye. Okay, Joanna? Aye. Linda? Aye. And myself, Veronica, aye. All right. Uh, public comment? I don't believe we have any public here. So we will go on to the next. Sorry about that. Find this. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know how to do this at the, there we go, sorry. Um, on to approval of the minutes. Um, Madam uh, Chair, yes. I have a set of minutes here with no date on it. Yeah, and I think, yes. I, I think Sue, Sue also emailed in an addition for that. I assume um, that's Janu January, maybe? Yeah, and at the start time. Yeah, it should be January 18th, 2024. And the time start was in 7.06 a.m., but most likely 10.06 a.m. So- And I got that noted. I would suggest that we approve all minutes except for that, and then we will send out the revised minutes for approval. I don't mind approving those minutes amended, as amended. As amended. Yeah, I would say as amended is fine. It's, it's just okay. basically, um, you know, technicalities. It didn't have anything to do with the substance. So um, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of um, January 1, 1824 as amended, 21524 and 31824. Okay, can I have a I second? Second. I second. All right. Um vote, Sue Aye. John? Aye. Joanna? Aye. Linda? Aye. Myself, Veronica, I. So minutes with amendment have been approved. All right. Next is on to uh, item number five, which is election of officers. Last uh, week, um, the committee um, kindly uh, nominated me and voted me as chair. And now um, we last week said that we would, uh, we did a vote for a vice chair position. So um, I, at this point, would like to make a nomination for vice chair. Um, You're the chairman. Pardon me? You're the chairman. Uh, the cha oh, I cannot? Generally speaking, you can't. Is it generally speaking, or is it not allowed? You want There's me to make motions? occasions where it's allowed if someone else wants to do it. I think it'd be a, okay. a better. Well, then let me, let me, I'll, I'll allow for the floor if we can have a nomination for vice chair. I make, make a motion to nominate um, Joanna Roach as vice chair. That's where I was going. Okay. Do we have a second? I'll second, I'll second that motion. Okay. Second by Linda. We can have a vote on that. Sue Minthanen. Aye. John Belosh. Aye. Linda? Aye. Joanna? Aye. And Veronica? Aye. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And um, we are going to dig into this and um, we're going to get it done. Oh, my get it done well. Yeah. So thank you. 
Um, so now on to item number six, which is continuation the discussion of the RFP for fiscal oh, year 26. Um, what uh, was sent out to you by Lexi earlier this week was uh, beyond the minutes. You also got the complete copy of the current RFP in addition to the um, rubric for the current RFP. Along with that were proposed additions to be added into the area on the RFP that we have control of changing. And for um, sake of discussion, what I've done is I've taken those 12, there's 12 questions there. It starts with mission statement and uh, organization history. And the last on that list would be description of role of volunteers in this organization. I've numbered them because um, what I propose is that we look at these suggestions and work them into this area because this is the area that we can change. Oh, we have fine. the ability to ask yes. whatever we want in those questions. The rest of the RFP is basically a boilerplate with uh, legalities, but this is what we have the ability to change. Um, so, before um, any any comments on that or um, any suggestions on, you know, um, a better way to tackle this, or should we just get into it, Madam Chair? Just a semantics question. Just a just a comment. We need to take the word "here" out of here. Where? Here, 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 here. You can't do it here. You're going to ask for 500 words, unlike the second one, the third one, second one. You're not putting 500 words here. I would take the word here out and say attach. So when this is sent out, it's a word document. They can just type it into there. That's why it's here. So that's a placeholder in print. Yeah. It's only a placeholder in print because uh, this is a this is a live document that people uh fill in electronically. All right, but I just don't want them limited to, oh my God, how am I going to get uh, two sentences in here? Oh, oh no. And when they, when I respond to these types of things, I don't usually see the word here. Okay. I, yeah. I mean, I can remove it. Um, it won't. I think that would probably be better than some people may go, oh my God. If they have to attach a separate document, then there's a problem. Okay. Maybe just say, please type response. Yeah. I just okay. leave it there. Okay. All righty. Okay. Um, I think that we all agreed that in this last round, we weren't necessarily getting all the information that we needed to make um, um, objective decisions. So um, on this list of questions, which I think the questions are appropriate, but there needs to be more we can't leave it to the grant writers to give us the information. We have to be more specific. So this will, hopefully when we're done, this will allow us to be more specific and get the information we need. So under the first one, which is mission statement and organization history, um, not I don't have anything that I'd want to add in that. Does anyone have anything that they want to add into that? Or we just leave that. I would suggest. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Linda. Linda, uh, take the three out, unless it's three hundred to five hundred. That's not how you write this. It's three hundred to five hundred. Just another technical. Yeah. How about maximum five hundred? Yeah, because that's what we've got elsewhere. So we might as well just track it. Okay. Okay. I don't know if there's. We wanted a minimum. There. Uh, the way it was written initially is there was a minimum response, so I'll just do three to five hundred words. Um, hundred to five hundred. Do you need to have a minimum? Uh, honestly, I would. this particular version, I would remove that entire thing and replace it with a table that has some of the questions that Joanna had put together. Um, 
whereas we would have that first question be a table that we would have things like total budget, profit, loss, grants for the last years, and then have that be the initial question. Okay. Um, and then the other thing is, I would say maybe we just reduce, like, do we need to have maybe just a hundred word description of organization and service offered instead? Hundred words is like three sentences. I know. I, I, I understand. But we want, like, we want a short summary of what the organization is and what it's doing. And, and I think that max at three hundred. Then okay. I mean, can I just ask a question yes. about that? Wouldn't would why don't we just ask them to put their mission statement there so we don't have to dig for it, right? Yeah. Because part of what we're evaluating is the relationship of the grant to their mission statement. Then Perfect. the word would be include your mission statement. That's fine. I would say just, I would just say, please write your organization's mission statement. Don't put the word right. I would put include. Because okay. Include mission guys, statement. Have them. Because they all, most of these 501c3s have to have them to get a 501c3. Yes, exactly. Right. So just right. include your, your mission statement in your organizational history. And then they'll just put something that's already put together in there. They don't have to write anything. And we don't care how long it is because they have to, they had to file it officially anyway. The other thing that I would suggest is in the first question is that we have and service being service being provided through this program. We want to make sure that yeah. we're dragging it back to a per program basis. Yeah. So a short, succinct description of what this grant will pay for seems to be a good idea. Yeah. And I, I don't know that we need a whole lot of organizational history. Probably not. Some of these organizations go back longer than we're here. Right. But we are asking for specifics on the program in other areas. Yeah, what specific objective down. does the program have is number seven. So it's the organization has a mission statement. They're applying for a grant for a specific program in that organization. So okay. keeping that separate in number seven, I think it it we get the information. If people are going to fill this out appropriately, um, yeah. we're asking that. As, we're, as we go down through these 12 questions, it could be more because of Joanna's questions, um, we're drilling down more specifically, like you just said, where we don't need to see it up on one. It gets, the, the rubber meets the road somewhere in, in the middle of this section. Right. So, right. So then, so the other thing I'm thinking of as we are writing these questions is how we can incorporate their responses into the summaries and reports at the end when we're reporting out. So um, I, I think that's actually an excellent point. We can drill down later into it, but we'll do uh, um, what, what I'm getting right now is for question number one, provide mission statement and organizational history, 300 word max. Is that a fair summary of where we- I thought it? we were going to just say include it instead of 300 word max. They don't have to rewrite it, just include it because these all had to have them to begin with. I don't know how provide or include is substantially different in this context, but I will switch it to include. Yeah, because they don't have to rewrite it. Right. Well, to me, it's if you use the word include, it means there's something else that would it, it you would be including in the response. Whereas, what, what is your mission statement? Yeah, let's just go. With, what is your mission statement and organizational history? All right, don't put any max down that. Right, they'll just include it. Okay. Because they're going to be detailing more as they move down through these questions. That's right. All right. So if we can. Agree on that, provide, or excuse, include mission statement and organization history. That's it for number one. Number two. Dates are wrong. This is last year's. It hasn't gone right. out yet. So this will be July 25 to yeah. June of 26. Yeah. And it's fiscal year 26. All right, yeah, so provide nice. an outline of the timing of your programming. So 
That I think is a legitimate thing to say. If your program isn't going to start until September 1, it's September 1 to June 30th. Um, but that's important for us to know also if we're looking at quarterly reports that there may not be any, any dollars attached with uh, a quarter. It would just be NA and it goes back to the application. The program doesn't start until a certain date. Yeah. All right. So with no correction or additions on that, we'll move to number three. May I, sorry, um, Veronica, I just want to, when we, when we go from question to question, I'll just try and restate it. So I make sure I have it exactly as close to what we want for when we put it in is provide an, out, provide an outline of your program's timeline between, and then fiscal year dates. Is that acceptable? Yeah. Cause it's the 24 and 25. Yep. Right? And it's fiscal um, year. Six. This is again, this is last year's version. I, I haven't know. written this I one. Know. I just want to make sure. Got it. Okay. Good. All right. So number three, describe the purpose, proposed program project for which you are applying for funding. So um be short answer. Well, because you know, I get more detail on the next four questions. Okay. Um, what I added into here, because if you're going to describe your proposed program or project which you're applying, I made a 3A there to ask if this program or project will be done in person or remote. All right. All right. So uh, rather than putting just another sentence, I think if we do three and then three A, so they specifically have to answer that. Okay. On to number four. Who will this work participation here in person or remote participation? That's usually how it's phrased. Okay, participate, remote participation. So just for then for 3A, will this- Are service services provided in, per, well, I said, are services provided in person or remotely? Or Linda, you just made it, um, are services um, in person or remotely or with remote participation? Um, yeah. I think, I think if we just get a, a clear statement on that. Yeah. All right. So number four, who will this program serve? Be specific in terms of demographics and expected numbers. Um, what I added in there is number of people served via program and looking back in history, so 22, 23, and 24. So if it's in existing program, we'll see that they served X amount of people the past three years. Did you want to put a 4A in there? Um, is this a new program or a continuing program? Yeah, I think that's a good clarification. Okay. And the, the question about how many people has it served makes more sense. So you just want to know if this is new or it's been, it's a, it, continuing program that they need it would be funding. continuing program as opposed to existing a continuing program new or continuing yeah something in that line on a 4a may i propose uh who will this program serve be specific in terms of numbers served and demographics for continuing programs please include last three years if applicable yeah Okay. And for a new program, they just would put not applicable. Yeah, yeah it, I mean, that, that would be covered with expected right. numbers served. And then we can compare that for the, the submission next year if they if they apply again, and we can see how many they served versus how many they expected to serve. How effective was Correct, this? correct. Okay. How so, are we going to, how are, stay there for a second, how are we going to, through the quarterly reports, we're going to see how effective a program is. So the consultants in the initial one brought up two measures, yeah. and we should consider these more before we implement them this year because yeah. they can get tricky. But a effectiveness metric, which would be something recorded 
from the student, from the participants in the program about how effective it was. And then something that would be more functional or economic, which would be a number served based on their quarterly reporting. Okay. Um, I, I forget the specific term, but it was a performance metric and an uh, uh, efficacy metric. Yeah, I was looking more of the efficacy metric part of it. All right. Well, okay. can I just add, add something to that? Yes. One of the thoughts that I had subsequent to sending the list of questions would be to ask if they, on the list, do you send out a survey to your participants rating the program. I think we should absolutely ask everybody that. And I have been in all of my other grant writing, been asking or have uh, either requiring or heavily suggesting a some sort of measurement from the people participating, like a survey of some sort or another. Yep. I think that even would if, make it consistent across the board. Yeah, I mean, even if it's just rate the program you know, one through five stars. Yeah. Some way they gauge the, the people that they're serving as their response to it. That can it, be required if we would like it to be. On a quarterly basis? I would not suggest on a quarterly basis either. because it is a, it is not a, you can't, man. I don't think you can mandate people fill out surveys. Yeah. Um, when we uh, we were putting I'm putting together a wellness program through Mass for for teachers on Nantucket, there they can only ask the people to volunteer like if they want to fill the survey out, and we can't really penalize them if nobody wants to do the survey. But we can say in order to help support this program in further grants, please fill this out to tell us what you think. Of it. Okay. Uh, I think we should we should be judicious in applying this this year because I'm pretty sure in the spring when we iron this out there might be a standardized one offered by the consultants so I don't know how much we should require it this year but getting people started on it will only help in the long run okay does that get included where we talk about the um more of the and I'm, I'm not finding this at the moment here but just um the results of your program. You know, how are you going to track results and include it at that point that we ask for a survey from participants? So that's question eight. Describe the impact of this program. How will okay. you determine success or failure? Okay. And I think we can include that in in that point. It doesn't need to be in four. Okay. Okay. So I would I would do it in eight. Um, include a copy of the survey that you plan to um, provide for your participants and whatever language you can make that succinct would be wonderful. Yeah. Like, well, we should make a pass at it when we talk about it because I think there's a couple of ways we can we can constrain the answers by offering examples there. Okay. Uh, All right. So Number five. Um, we're on number five now. So uh, support um, infrastructure for the program. Describe the infrastructure. So with we that, hold that. Yes. I don't. That doesn't. I don't. Well, I don't like this one. It. It did not. So when I included it in the previous RFPs, I was hoping it was going to give me or us a picture of what the footprint of the organization was. This question did not end up providing those kinds of responses, and I it might be worth just pulling. Okay, but there, are, but there is, but there is a structure that we do want to see, and it would it be here number of employees, number of full time employees, um, um, uh, what other measurements or metrics would go in there? Um, okay. I mean, do we want to use that this hey, question? Well, yeah, like, do we want to use this question as the the table that, that I was proposing earlier? It shouldn't be in the middle of it, though. I mean, I don't think that matters terribly. This is one that we're going to, like, it'll be a, a mm -hmm. table where they type in responses or values or numbers primarily. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of that stuff also we got when we did our, our site visits with the members when we split up our site visits. 
I think and then report it back here. That's how we've been doing it all along. I think it's best to get it in writing at the head of the presentation, and then we can compare it. If Because I'm not even sure if the recommendation is going to include site visits. How do we do site visits for off-island organizations? Well, that's the problem. We've talked to them on the phone in the minute and over on occasion. And they'll come right. in sometimes, too. But my, my suggestion for this would be to have the this be the nuts and bolts table question um, with a summary of the organization's budget, its employees, whether they're remote or in person, um, and then whatever else that should be included in there, included in there. Okay, because this is specific for program also. It's not for the organization. So um, if we put employees, full-time, part-time, um, Jericho has a whole major list of stuff to go there, so we don't have to tell him what to do with it. He's got okay. a whole list of it done. And Joe and I will probably pick your brain on that um, between turning that, like making this into a document and then sharing it back to the group for final approval. Okay. Because okay. clearly the junior doesn't have any facility here. So there's going to be some where this doesn't apply at all. Exactly. But you're still going to have staff devoted to the program whether you're um, paid or not paid, you still are going to have people, you know, bodies that are associated with the program. Um, so Jericho, we'll leave that for you right at this point, right? So number I'm six, say, excuse Joanna. I, I just want to say that, you know, to Linda's point, there are outliers on this grant program. Right. There are outliers because of the nature of the fact that we are an island and we get some services in these remote sort of capacities. And what I was trying to do is to give us a kind of a cheat sheet, if you will, of, of basic facts from every organization so that we would be able to compare apples to apples. Because what's happening right now is that these are kind of standard things that you would use to evaluate a grant request, but we have to tease them out of the information. And it takes us a ton of time to do that. And it seems that we should be putting that work to the organization to do. Mm -hmm. And what I envision is taking this table out of the responses, dropping it into the year-end report as the top line summary of the organization, and yes. then adding the specifics of our evaluation of it and the projected path or past history of it. Yep, I, I think that's a great idea, Jericho. It just sort of standardizes the way we're looking at each organization. All right. Acknowledging the fact that it may not apply to at least the guys that come for the report, Exactly. So what I'll try and do on that, so like this, what I'll try and do for this table is have it be things that are applicable to any 501C. And just go NA if they don't. And then what we're going to have to do, and this is another thing that came out of my discussion with um, uh, at least yesterday, is that we're going to have, I have to at least do open hours and we should probably have an open meeting for providers when we release, after we release this in order to tell them what uh, we're looking for. Jericho, yeah. highly, highly, highly recommend that because what we are doing is we are organize, we are organizing this stuff in our minds. We need them to understand what we're asking. Right. Um, and it will, to do it in person, to do it on a Zoom meeting so people have the ability to ask questions, it will just cut down. It, it will improve the information we receive. And that's the goal. Yeah. The one consistent thing I learned from every other municipality that has something like this is that they saw their results and their applications and their programming get better as they had more participation, both from staff and from the committee members in yeah. roughly the equivalents. Yeah. Um, moving um, forward, that'll be incorporated right into the schedule right. for the whole program. Joanna? I, I have one more thing, because I have to actually scoot out a little early because my son has a dentist appointment. Um, but I want to just know how to approach this with the group. So I spoke with Sonny at the Community Foundation at some point in the summer, and I've also had some a couple of conversations I don't uh, with the T Tuppence Harris Foundation. I don't know how many of you are familiar with them. I used so, to work with them closely way yep. back. 
So then you know that both of those other organizations are also making grants in the same area that we are. So we had a, the three of us had a conversation where it seems like it would make sense for our group to invite Sunny and Doug from Tuppence Harris to come in and meet with us prior to this grant cycle so that we could align our goals and make our money work effectively because they're doing grants to the same organizations that we are, both of those organizations. So it, with everybody's agreement, I'd love to try to invite them to a meeting with our group so that we could talk about this. I would I love think to that's see a that. Great suggestion. Oh. Great suggestion. Joanna, uh, when do you, when do you need to jump off immediately? Yes, I need to jump okay. off. We have a we have a call on Monday morning. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. we we had that on our list. So is that good for everyone Monday morning? Because be, if you're going to jump oh. off. I would want yeah. to jump ahead to our agenda because one of the things we want to do is to establish a regular time and date. Right, because you had asked me about Fridays. Right. Um, I'm trying to get a standard meeting done. Right that's now. great. That's standard, a standard Friday. time. I know Friday is good for Sue. Friday is fine Sue. for me. Okay. Uh, Linda, a, a meeting on a Friday is good for you? Once a month. Good morning. Probably during grant cycle, it's going to have to be a little more frequent than once a month. Right. Every two weeks. That means I have a meeting every single freaking day of the week. And I'd rather not, but if we have to do it on a Friday every once in a while, I'm, I'm all right. Okay, because Friday Friday and Tuesday seem to be the dates that I know Sue is, is limited with her time. Um, Joanna, Friday is better than Tuesday for you? Um, I Friday okay, so is better. Friday is better than Tuesday. I could do Tuesday in the afternoon, but once yeah. FinCom starts up, we meet on Tuesdays at 4 p.m. So yeah, and HCC is Tuesdays at 4 p.m. I have CPC in the morning, and we're now have, going into interview. So Friday. So let's let's go with Friday. Is there a, a preference towards afternoon or morning? Morning. Morning. Morning, morning would be my preference. So John? 10 a.m. Yeah. No, so I can't. We, I have a standing 10 a.m. I could do nine. I could do nine or I could do the afternoon. I have a 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock meeting every Friday. Let's do okay. afternoon. Um, do people mind starting earlier than nine o'clock? Is like 8.30 a good start time? No. Nope. No? Okay. Nine o'clock would be your earliest? Yep. So Which it's either us. nine o'clock or one o'clock. I can't. I'd rather not do afternoons. Okay. So we do 9 a.m. on Friday. Yeah. That's okay. Fine. 9 a.m. When, when would we start this? Because there's one, there's Friday the 4th I cannot do, I but would, every other Friday is good. I would suggest this is the tempo we would do once we get RFPs back mm. and start doing the evaluating and interviewing process. Uh, our current timeline looks that looks to be three weeks from Monday, which is when it will probably Tuesday when I'm hoping to release the RFP out. I've got three weeks, one month. Okay, because right, I'm not here the whole week of October 6th through the 12th. It would okay. be this would be after that. Yeah, this would be late October. This would mark it as the 20 something of October when we would be getting these back. All right, I'm in okay. New Jersey. One of those weeks at the end of October. So immediates right now is um, we had a meeting on the 23rd as a placeholder, which is Monday morning or Friday at 9 a.m. So our next meeting, do we want to hold it next Friday at 9 a.m.? All right. Or do, keep, or do we keep Monday? I don't care. So... Uh, because I know I'm one of the complicating factors. When we get into the meat of evaluating things, are we going to want to meet more than once a week? That in the past, enough. we have. I would. I would. I, I would be able to offer for a short period of time, like a two-hour block on a Wednesday morning, or no, Monday or Thursday morning at nine. So, my suggestion here would be that we keep the. Friday, and then we have a, if we need to, day that we can agree as being better-ish 
for everyone involved. Um, or the other thing I could throw out there is I could try to change my 10 o'clock meeting on Fridays to be to be one o'clock so that okay. I would have nine Ooh. to 11 on Fridays. That would be amazing. Yeah, yeah if possible. Thank you. Okay. So I just I'm, see that one hour being really limiting it's for us. Tight. I, I agree. I agree. I'm fine with changing that. I can do that. So our so next we'll meeting. Monday or not? No. No at Monday. this time. Okay. okay. We will meet next Friday at 9 a.m. And it'll be a um, hybrid meeting. So that's the 27th. Mm -hmm. So, and we will hold that 9 to 11 on Friday as our meeting time if needed. And if we need to add other meetings in as we do deliberations or whatever it will, but that'll be our steady meeting time. So no thank you. Thank you, Joanna. Yeah. And that's appreciate, awesome. I know you have to jump. Okay. All Bye. Right. Thanks, everybody. And we still have quorum, so that's good. All right. Bye. Right. Okay, so well, we have number six. Have to leave at eleven. So or shortly okay. Shortly thereafter. Okay. We will. Uh, we will work quickly at this point. All right. So um, we're back now to our questions here. So you're going to be doing the the chart on number five. So number six is describe the need served of this program and the methods used to determine that need. Um, I don't have any additions to that. If anyone has any comments, we'll let that stand. A lot of these products are, are, are gonna be answered in one, in one thing. They're sort of overlapping and redundant. Where there is, is, no there is some redundancy. Six seven, eight, six, seven, and eight, I think, are they're going to explain all that in one paragraph. Then that's fine. So describe needs served and methods used to determine need. What specific objectives does this program have? Describe the impact of this program expected or achieved. How will you determine success or failure? Okay. I mean, I can and number, and then break. Yeah, and number eight is where we said we want to have them include a survey that will be used. So that should be separate. Um, if you want to collapse six and seven. Um, I think six and seven, if you change the language a little bit, and six encompasses seven. So I split them because in describe the needs served by this program and methods used to determine, I, I want that is the focus of me is how do you know this need exists and how did you find or what need exists and how did you find that? And then objectives and need are usually not like what I want in what specific objectives does this program have is a measure is something that I can look at and be, did it succeed or did it feel fail this year? Did you hit your target? That's sort of why I wanted to do it. Wasn't well, that what's in eight? No. Yeah. Uh, wait, actually, yeah. No, that's a fair point. So we yeah. can probably just drop specific objectives does this program have? Yeah, because you're already going there between six right. and eight for going there. So get rid of seven. So to just to use language that I've been using endlessly lately. So whether you're writing like an IEP for a student or a treatment plan in medicine or therapy, you have a goal. And then right. you have the objectives that will help you reach that goal. So right. can we put it in that language? What is like, the, what are the the objectives help you reach the goal, right? Right. You are there's these are the tasks you do to reach the goal. Right. That that's a very good analogy. Um, and you know, that's how you write a IEP, a lesson plan, or a treatment plan. You've got your objective and then you have your goal and what are the objectives to achieve that? So if we can collapse these seven and eight. figure out just yeah, massage six, seven, and eight down to maybe two. So I'd like to keep six separate because the needs is how we justify to FinCom, et cetera. Right. Yeah. And then seven and eight we can combine into um what specific objectives does this program have and how will you determine if they succeed or not. It doesn't quite catch the goals and objectives element that Sue had. We can, because objectives. Right. Objectives isn't, 
Why does an objective go into six? Because we don't want them to have objective and need in the same thing. Okay. Right. Right. That is that is the needs. You know, how did they determine the needs? What is the need that it's serving? So um, what is the objective? And, you know, honestly, I, you know, I could probably even take seven and say, what are your goals and objectives that the program has? Incorporate that. But I don't know if we're just having them give more words as opposed to giving us substance. We want substance. How about this? Well, impact is going along with objective. And I, I think I think you're correct. We can basically we can basically combine seven and eight into what are the specific goals of this program? How will you measure success and failure? Right. Right. That sound acceptable? Yeah. Yes. We are including their measure. Yes. As opposed to as it's currently written, de uh, determine. Measure here. I know it's a uh, a, a very fine tip distinction, but measure would include, this is where we would include sure. surveys, yeah. uh, uh, performance metrics, that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. All right. Are we going to specifically ask them for surveys? I think surveys are prohibitive I think we can suggest it. How do you measure? I, they're going to tell us how they're going to measure it. Yeah. We don't have right. to tell them to do And survey. what I would include is in parentheses as sort of an example. I.e. I.e. surveys, survey. performance metrics, um, numbers okay. served, yeah. user or yeah. uh, client okay. retention, that kind of and thing. They're going to tell us how they're going to measure it. Yeah. Right. But, it, but we want to we want to know ahead of time in the grant how they're going to measure that. So asking okay. specifics. All right. Um. On to number nine, I think. Jericho, are you fine with our conversations that we just had? All right. I, I understand my uh, my what how to write that. Yes. Okay. okay. So nine collaboration, I think that's perfectly fine there. So on number ten, what is the amount of grant you were requesting from the contract review committee? Um, if not granted the full reward, will the project be possible? That is good. 10A, I would make total grants received in the past three years. So and I was, amount received from the town in the same period. I would suggest we include that in the table and not have that as a separate yeah. pros question. Because yeah. we really only care about the number and then the tracking of the last couple of years. Yeah. So I'm going to, uh, with my suggestion is including that in the table and yeah. we'll have grants. Because the way we do it at CPC is we have our tables between the, the three things we have to give at least 10% to. And under each one of the ones that is applied, we list every uh, award they've ever gotten for what FY year. So we know okay. what they've gotten in the past and that's all in a table form. Um, okay. Veronica, but could you repeat your phrasing of that just so I can capture it for the table? Okay, total grants received in 24, 23, and 22, and grant amount received from the town in the same years, and then grants requested in 2025, or 2026, I should say. This is 2026. All right, now stay there for a second. CPC always, at, we're type of funding type of thing. Yeah, no, it's... And the it's CPC asks... What other grants have you received? Not from the town, but what right. other grants have you received? And right. that's not in here. No, we just see so that is that. that's the last thing I said. Grants she received. Said, she said from the town. Well, yeah. No, no, she said both. Grants received last three years. Grants received from the town. Specifically last year. from the town. Yeah, we'll I distinguish. Use the word specifically. We're going to distinguish. We'll, I'll town distinguish and that. Outside. I'll distinguish that in the table okay. as received from town of Nantucket. And, and the last was grants requested. So that'll be what have you applied for for this grant period? So it's what you've received in the past, what you received from the town in the past, and what have you applied for in this period going forward? From anywhere? Well, that I don't care about that, frankly. I only care about what they've received. 
They people apply for I know because I'm involved with a lot of these places. They apply for grants all over I the think, place, but they don't get them. I think the, so I don't want to know that. I want to know what they got. I think the idea is to check to see if they are applying for other funding sources on the town or if they're just asking for the town, like if they're just relying on the town grant solely and not looking for other sources. That leads grant. back to sustainability. And it goes back to this question that if we don't fund you fully, can you do this program? And will you do the program? That's always my question every year with, uh, with these guys. Every single year I ask that same question. Of all of yeah, them. I think we're just making that explicit now so that it's provided right. up and that they can prepare a better response to it. That's yeah. I think that's right. all we're trying to do. A ton right. of what we're doing here is just taking what we've always been doing it and making it explicit and transparent so that the grant requesters know what we're asking for. And right. And a lot of these are questions that we have asked during deliberation. So the more information we get ahead of time and have them think about it, it will be easier to evaluate. All right. So are you clear on that, Jericho? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to include into the table grants requested last three years, grants requested town last three years, grant, I'm oh, sorry, grants received in those two categories, and then grants requested for next fiscal year or the current period that they're applying under. Well, that's part of the application. And is that for this, the pro, it, this same program they're applying for or so just in that, general? For this program. So if we're going to limit it solely to program, that will make it very difficult for them to answer that question. If it's a new program, they got no answer here. Well, they could they could be asking money uh, from someone else also. That's possible. Well, I'll, I'll give you an example. They, they could, but Interfaith, Interfaith Council comes to the CPC and they get about 350, 360 grand uh, for the fuel assist, you know, for uh, rental coming. assistance. Right. They're coming to us for the the food pantry and the fuel assistance. So what they apply to us for is not relevant, but it's a grant they applied for. So how do you distinguish that? If they because they've got three different hats on. So and that and that is that's difficult because the way that they're applying for the grant has been for all programs. So I think this is also where our education to the grant applicants is maybe our guidance will be important or i don't know if we can specifically tell them um we i don't think we could specifically tell them but we could tell them how this grant works well they need i to wouldn't know what to tell them about this yeah they need, yeah they need to be specific as they're asking us for a certain amount of money usually in the hundred thousand range where's that money going is it portion going to to rental, a portion going to food, a portion going to fuel. And I think that's the way they presented it in the past, but they then they would have to put down the CPC grant. Right. So what I think the only way that those questions are going to be easy to answer and not require time by a dedicated uh, person, accountant, really, <laughs> would be if they are for the organization as a whole. Oh, yeah. And I don't know if that's if that's how we want to be evaluated. Well, of the past people that have applied, the Interfaith Council is the only one that I can think of that has come in for the organization as a whole because we have so many things underneath it. Because when Fairwinds comes in, it's for a specific program. Yeah. When all the rest of them come in, it's for a very targeted program. Interfaith is the only one that has that many components. Well, and, and technically, as of last year's agreement, they signed up and agreed to a use limited um like specifically use like there's three categories, three categories. That they applied okay we haven't been any tighter than that all right because they're um, the only ones that are going to do that so grant so i i think we're going we're going to have to if we want to have the question about other grants received it can only, we have to be very clear if we're asking about grants being used for this program. Yeah. And that would be something that we could ask for, but it'd have to be something we both educate and are very explicit in the application. Because I don't want, I don't care if they ask for a grant for crossing the street. It has nothing to do with this. My point is, have you applied for grants for the program you're applying to us for? 
So we need to be much more specific because they could be applying for 50 grants and I don't care about the rest of it because it has nothing to do with what they're applying to us for. So I think we need to be very specific in that table as to what we're asking. Is this an ongoing program? Then chair, clearly they might've gotten grants for this same program. Yeah, That's what we need to know. Yeah. Not what they did for something totally unrelated that has, that has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Or if they got like a grant to modernize their technology. We don't care. I don't care. That. Yeah. So I just want to know what they got rel relative to this area. Is that acceptable if I make very explicit in the table and in education afterwards that we're asking about grant requests for the specific program? I that would be a jurisdiction of it. Well, I mean, we can ask for... We can ask for the organizational grants, but it's well, not giving us a, information a, that in a discussion, but I don't want it in the matrix. Um, okay, so I have that clarification, which I believe moves I, us on to 11, 11 line Correct. item. Um, some of that info is going to be captured in the table that we're putting in five. Okay. Um, and we want to make sure in this that we get um the cost of the program with budget details. Um, you want to know a uh, number of people, well, the number of people served. Do we, ha we have that in four. Um, the last thing is copy of the end of the year grant from the year before, copy of their budget for 2020 fiscal year 25, and then copy of the actuals. So we want to see Past, we want to see current, we want to see future. So what well, we this specific program that we have to yeah, yes. we have to be so that's it. Proposed. And that's only for ongoing programs. I'm not sure how many of those we're going to get except for like the vineyard and the, the lawyer and all that stuff. I mean, I think we ask proposed program budget, actual previous year. Right. If continuing program, if it's a continuing program. Yeah, wait, that, that can be added in. Okay. Um, actual previous year P&L sheet. Okay. And then, uh, so that's that's future, that's past. And then what, what was, there was one for present. Right. I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything here. Well, they're, what they're asking for, what's their budget, what we're asking for. That would be right. so, okay. So I'm. The so way past and present At present application, if it's a continuing program, um, there are details on the budget from the last, you know, the last FY25. And some of these guys are not running at you know July 1, some of them are running September yeah. 1, and some of them are running a uh, year, the regular right. year. Okay, I'm going to have to leave. Yes, all you right, so we got 12, we got one more, Joe. Okay, um, and number 12, I think volunteers, we're fine with that. So I think I would, say, they're, uh, I would, I would pull that, uh, just yeah, delete okay. it. Yeah, we can ask that in the interview. I don't, I think there's a variety of Not programs really. that are being delivered through this grant that have no possibility okay. for volunteer yeah. participation. So I don't think that should be included. Okay, I think, John, if we, uh, if you leave at this point, we lose quorum. So I think uh, that we can actually. That. We can actually adjourn at this point. We'll be meeting next Friday at 9 a.m. All right. I make a motion to adjourn. Next, next Friday adjourn. being a week from tomorrow. Yes, a week, a week from, from tomorrow. tomorrow. So do I have a second okay. for adjournment? Second. Second. Okay. John? Okay. Aye. Second, aye. Okay. Sue? Aye. Linda? Aye. Veronica, aye. Have a great day, everyone. Enjoy DC, John. Bye-bye. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.